Peace, family. Welcome to another edition of FYI. For your information, this is a Walk With Me production. I am your good brother, second son, a second with a K, S-U-N, because I am Carlos, second son. Call up law. Part two, we're delving in. I believe we'll just read through the pre a little bit of the preface of this book. Richard Rothstein, copyrighted in, it was, this book was published in 2017. Let's read through the contents real quick. Uh, you got 12 chapters here. And again, we want you to know that, we want the family to know that the reasoning for delving into these type of pieces of literature as you can see the name of this book again this is part two hopefully you've already caught part one so we can tie it in a forgotten history of how our government segregated America that's very important to know family because when we in the climate that we in today where we're uh, attempting to petition if you will this same government that set this up, the way of uh, doing business, the way the government does business, in this form of uh, what, what this author is calling the color of law. Because, of course, we know that this government is split up in colors. You see? And again... It's very important to know how this government and, and uh, corporation operates so that we can take a righteous angle at, you see, getting our just due. And when you, when you learn again how this government operate, then you might take that energy and go do for self. You see? Because there is a uh, group of people that has took it upon themselves to operate in a do for self mindset. Meaning it's certain things that you're not going to go ask somebody else to do for you. Like educate your children. You see? Etc. After you do your due diligence and knowing, okay, this is how this thing is set up. Let's check it out. Because again, you it's important that we don't use emotional energy towards this entity like as it relates to you trying or attempting to get this entity to award you some type of uh, reparations when the whole corporation was set up in a certain way to operate and that's it it ain't, ain't no changing it it's all in writing you see? And this this is what these segments are all about, going into the literature and delving into the literature so we'll be able to see exactly what's going on here. Now, let's read through these, the contents of the book. Like we say, we're just going to read the preface, through the preface. Chapter one, if San Francisco, then everywhere. And that chapter was basically about how this redlining or this jurisdictional um, these these jurisdictional boundaries were set as it relates to these zip codes and you see what, what part of the town that the so-called blacks are living on or African Americans and what side of town what's suburban you see what I'm saying what's what's you, you see what's quote unquote ghetto etc it started in San Francisco the split up of these jurisdictions and then, of course, all other cities in the United States of America adopted the same way of splitting the city up. 
This is important, fam. As it relates, like we're saying, to to educating your children, because that's where all the education start is at home. And if at home is in a very um, a low vibrational, you see what I'm saying, state, meaning you that you're you're miseducated. Let's 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 use that word. In these what you call quote unquote ghettos is set up for the people to be miseducated. Yeah, let's use that word. Because they're educated on a certain level, quote unquote, because you're going to send them to school. With everybody, you see, going from the projects to the independent school district. So they learning something. But is it something that's going to liberate them? You see? To where they can grow up and have confidence and self-esteem in themselves to where they're doing for self. That that's see that's what we're talking about here. Two, public housing, black ghettos. That's chapter two. Three, racial zoning. Chapter three. Chapter four. Own your own home. Chapter five. Private agreements. Government enforcement. Chapter six. White flight. Chapter seven. IRS support and compliant regulators. Chapter eight. Local tactics. Chapter nine. State sanctioned violence. Chapter 10. Suppressed incomes. See? Chapter 11. Looking forward, looking back. Chapter 12. Considering fixes. And mind you, this this I, I I uh employ or encourage the family to get you a copy of this book. It, it, you see, it's it's not you know it ain't one of them big boys. You know what I'm saying where you, you you know you educate yourself on again how these different precincts and uh, came about, uh, the cut up of these zip codes, etc., and how they really operate. Because we gotta know that. Is certain zip codes they're not going to get a holistic support you see from this government we got to know that now that's what we come in at, at knowing who we are so we can correct this within our own communities we correct this issue of specifically being miseducated and we got to know again that we're being miseducated on purpose because these, these cities are split up in different jurisdictional, you see what I'm saying, precincts or zip codes, etc. To where it's certain types of food, etc. that's not going to get to a certain zip code area or area code, if you will, that as well, you see. Let us read, through, just through the preface. When from 2014 to 2016, riots in places like Ferguson, Baltimore, Milwaukee, or Charlotte captured our attention, most of us thought we knew how these segregated neighborhoods with their crime, violence, anger, and poverty came to be. We said they are de facto segregated, that they result from private practices not from law or government policy. De facto segregation, we tell ourselves, has various causes. When African Americans moved into a neighborhood like Ferguson, a few racially prejudiced white families decided to leave. And then as the number of black families grew, the neighborhood deteriorated and white flight followed. He got in parentheses, white flight, quote unquote. Real estate agents steered whites away from black neighborhoods and blacks away from white ones. Banks discriminated with redlining, quote unquote. He has in quotation marks, redlining. That's where the split up of these different zip codes come into play. 
refusing to give mortgages to African Americans or extracting unusually severe terms from them with subprime loans. African Americans haven't generally gotten the educations that would enable them to earn sufficient incomes to live in white suburbs. And as a result, many remain concentrated in urban neighborhoods. Besides, black families prefer to live with one another. All this has some truth, but it remains a small part of the truth, submerged by a far more important one. Until the last quarter of the 20th century, racially explicit policies of federal, state, and local governments defined where whites and African Americans should live. Today's residential segregation in the North, South, Midwest, and West is not the unintended consequence of individual choices and of otherwise well-meaning law or regulation, but of unhidden public policy that explicitly segregated every metropolitan area in the United States. The policy was so systematic and forceful that its effect endured to the present time. Without our government's purposeful imposition of racial segregation, the other causes, private prejudice, white flight, real estate steering, bank redlining, income differences, and self-segregation still would have existed but with far less opportunity for expression. Segregation by intentional government action is not de facto. Rather, it is what courts call de jure, segregation by law and public policy. We define de jure in part one, so hopefully you go back and, and get that. Residential, or de jure really means yeah, real. That's really what it is. And de facto, of course, would mean uh, fake. See? A form of godliness, if you will. Connected, yeah, we'll, we'll leave that for another cause, for another time. Residential racial segregation by state action is a violation of our Constitution and its Bill of Rights. The Fifth Amendment, written by our founding fathers, prohibits the federal government from treating citizens unfairly. The 13th Amendment, adopted immediately after the Civil War, prohibits slavery or, in general, treating African Americans as second-class citizens. While the 14th Amendment, also adopted after the Civil War, prohibits states or their local governments from treating people either unfairly or unequally. The applicability of the 5th and 14th Amendments to government sponsorship of residential segregation will make sense to most readers. And what he's saying there is you got to go into the 5th and 13th Amendment because the 5th Amendment, you will see that it, 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 it implies that a citizen is not able to be... Um, The, the citizen is not able to be stripped, if you will, of its life, liberty, and uh, ability or, 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 or uh, its actual yeah, ability to own property. That's really what the Fifth Amendment is all about. You see what I'm saying? Having the liberty to own your property. You see what I'm saying? And now we already know that the 14th Amendment was there you know, to, to basically do the same. And as it relates to residential segregation, we already know that just here recently, as of like in 2007-ish, up in there, you see, where there was a, a widespread of miseducation on how to buy a home. So therefore, we got a lot of my family mixed up in the, uh, not the, the fixed rate. You see? Not the fixed rate. 
but the other rape. You know what I mean? That a lot of my family can tell you about. That changed what you call adjustable rape. See? A lot of my family was uh, uh, introduced to that rape. Again, not the fixed rape, where it, it stays the same. But my family was introduced to the adjustable, meaning out the blue, what I'm paying every 30 days goes up. You see? Now that's residential, that's not only residential segregation, but that's residential discrimination. You see, because segregation, of course, we already know that's talking about, you know, how we, we the, the, the so-called, the African Americans were, were not able to live next door to Caucasians at one point in time. We already know that. But the most important part to the whole color of law theme is that you only have privileges. That's the key here. If you are pledging allegiance to your U.S. citizenship, because that's where this color of law, you see, comes into play. Because with your U.S. citizenship, you a color. You consider the color. You see, and it's one color that is legally. Less than the other color. Legally. On paper. Not lawfully, but legally. So therefore, as long as you're doing business. You see, this is a very important lesson. As long as you're doing business in that name that attaches you to that color. There's only privileges granted to you. As it relates to the Constitution, the Dred Scott case already told us that any human being of African descent cannot be a U.S. S. citizen. So now it's important for us to ask us a question. Ask ourselves a question. Family, what exactly needs to be done in order to combat this Legal status, you see, that's already had been into place since, you see what I'm saying, has been uh, uh, activated since 1776, you see. So again, when he says the uh, applicability of the 5th and 14th Amendments to government sponsorship of a residential segregation will make sense to most readers it's the ones that really get that there has been legally a position or a label put on a people that has went through these different name changes Negro Black African American There has been a legal, you see, status attached to these people that, of course, they need to know who they are. Like Esau. Remember, Esau didn't even know who, what Jacob was talking about when he said birthright. Sell me your birthright. Remember that? See, all of this goes together. And we got to know that. These lessons. You see? Because again, as it relates to the Constitution, it, 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 it's, 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 it's rights embedded in it, but you remember the Constitution said you have a right or you have the freedom of speech, press, petition, assembly, and religion. See, all oh, that's important. Because within this U.S. citizenship, somebody has already made you a Christian. But you tell me in your constitution that I got the freedom of religion. See how important that is? As it relates to do for self, family. 
Because again, we we can't we can't just gloss over the fact that there is business in operation here, and we are part of it, whether you want to uh, uh, accept it or not. When you doing business in that slaveholder's name. There's only privileges, as we can see, and you can be done any and every kind of way as it relates to business. You see? Today, however, most Americans understand that prejudice toward and mistreatment of African Americans did not develop out of thin air. The stereotypes and attitudes that support racial discrimination have their roots in the system of slavery upon which the nation was founded. So to most of us, it should now seem reasonable to agree that Congress was correct when it determined that prohibiting African Americans from buying or renting decent housing perpetuated second class citizenship that was a relic of slavery. You see how that's a good time in there? Second class citizenship is what the man is saying. Which we already know that's what it is. Because again, family, we got to know that your home, the environment that you grow up in, it shapes and molds how you think. So if we at the beginning of, of our lives as children are placed in these ghettos, if you will, there's no mental stimulation there. There's no spiritual, where there's no mental stimulation, there's no spiritual stimulation. We got to know that. That that's how this systemic or systematic racism has really affected our minds to, again, believe that we can go approach this corporation that was founded on slavery. That'll never change. You, you It's in writing. But you have to know who you are as it relates to your nationality. We we can't we can't we can't escape that conversation. And it's not about as it relates to nationality. It's not about going asking the corporation for nothing. It's about knowing who you are and putting it on the record and then doing business as such. As such meaning like you know who you are. versus continuously Emotionally approaching this thing about this country, this this corporation that was founded on slavery, as it relates to like going in there and finding some kind of uh, quote unquote loophole or whatever, or some type of reparations from that it, it was founded again on this concept of making you a slave. Period, and it's on you to unslave yourself. If you will. Again, it's clear to see that those babies placed in what we call the ghettos or the projects, etc., there's a limit of holistic education, meaning economic education, you see, being educated on how the how money works. Being educated on family as it relates to relationships with, with male, between male and female and how to approach it, you see, as it relates to the, um, the, the, the art of war, if you will, you see what I'm saying, and, and, and knowing thyself, we already know that these certain jurisdictions that we call ghettos, there's a limit that these babies, you see what I'm saying? It's a limit that they can do. Let's say that. Even as they grow up to be quote-unquote adults. There's a limit. And again, why are we bringing all this up? Because it's on us to get into the way that this game is played. And play it, you see what I'm saying? From a do-for-self mentality or, 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 or angle. And again, that comes with education. Because this redlining, if you will, the way these cities are split up on purpose, that certain school district or certain schools, elementaries, uh, 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 junior high, high schools, etc., is only going to get a certain type, 
You see? Of education. That's on purpose. That's all we're saying. And life, liberty, and justice, all of that, it lies within the community. Not from a corporation. You don't go get life, liberty, and justice from a corporation. That's not granted to you from them. You get that from self, again. But you got to know who self is. And self is not Christian chattel property. That, that's, that's, that's of the devil. You see? And it's very important that we get into the knowledge of self so we can bust up all of this emotionally responding to these people thinking, you know what I mean? Enough is enough. You're like, you know what I mean? No. The enough is when you take hold of your life and your family and your situation and move forward in a holistic way. Not in a three-fifths of a person way. Because that's what we're dealing with here when we're talking about the color of law. A three-fifths of a person entity, if you will. That we have the right to liberate ourselves from. This is your good brother, second son. This has been a, another edition of FYI for your information. This is a Walk With Me production. Till the next time, peace.